Uh, essentially, uh, to put it all in a nutshell, I don't think, you know, if you're a believer <laughs> and if you got the Holy Spirit, I don't think I have to really say, uh, preface, you know, why we need such an event or such an opportunity rather. And really, you know, this is what I, how I consider it. I don't really consider it an event. I really consider it an opportunity. Um, it's not about the quote unquote event. Um, solemn assembly uh, 2021.org it has nothing to do with that that is simply a uh, trumpet if you will or a rally call uh, to the saints who are spread out across the country to gather themselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ gather yourself uh, with those in your community unto the Lord Jesus Christ it's not to promote a ministry it's not to be a minute it's none of that it's absolutely to uh, give the people a rally point to turn to the Lord with one accord uh, and and seek his mercy for our land for one uh, in regards to COVID uh, that he would rid our land of the pestilence and for two uh, to give his people a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ uh, I believe that that is the uh, ultimate thing that is needed uh, for our nation is for those who are called by his name Christians uh, to have a fresh revelation of himself even as his disciples on the road to Emmaus uh, who were walking with him and they were downcast and it wasn't until Jesus uh, interpreted to them all of the scriptures pertaining to himself that he uh, that they um, begin to walk in this newness of life and that is what we need we need Jesus to unveil himself to us so that we can walk in holiness so that we can walk uh, in purity and we can walk as witnesses uh, of him who was and is and is to come so uh, I really don't have an agenda like I said but if you guys have questions throughout this feel free to comment or whatever uh, I want to show you just a few kind of documents um, so switching back here um, so here's clearly you know the website or whatever um, but if you go all the way down to the bottom you will see a few resources event materials uh, the prayer guide is coming soon the declaration of a uh, intent is basically what is this uh, fasting guidelines from IHOP KC an 1863 proclamation uh, through uh, George Washington uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and then this document called the Solemn Assembly. And one second. And this this Solemn Assembly document is really where <laughs> this stuff is gold. So I would advise you guys uh, to check this document out. It's on the website. Uh, it's called the Solemn Assembly by Richard Owen Roberts, and it's a very well done, uh, just a biblical approach. Uh, historically and the necessity for it um, so check that out when you get an opportunity uh, it's imperative um, so yeah with that being said like um, like I mentioned this is not about any man's ministry this is not about any organization this is not about any quote-unquote event this is about people all across the land of America hearing the call Hey, we're fasting. We're turning our hearts to the Lord. We're going to seek Him. We're going to turn from our wicked ways. We're going to bring in the new year, uh, seeking the face of the Lord. We're not going to passively uh, wait for this thing to pass. We're not going to wait for some vaccine to that they can inject into our arms and hopefully things will get better. No, I'll, uh, I want to show you one more thing. Um, actually, you have to take my word for it, but 2 Corinthians. Second Chronicles 7 of verse 13 it speaks of when pestilence is in the land when pestilence hits the land that if my people who are called by my name okay so it's contingent God will do something but it's contingent upon his people having the right response to quote unquote pestilence and when you look in Webster's dictionary pestilence is an epidemic disease and when you go and look at what they're saying about COVID-19 doesn't matter what you believe about COVID-19. Uh, the fact of the matter is that some people are dying. Not even getting all the details of all that. Uh, but the fact is there is a quote-unquote pestilence in the land. 
at the end of the day, the only biblical response to such a time is that God's people would turn to him, would stand in the gap. That is what God is calling a people to in this day, in this hour, that we, his people would stand in the gap, that we would put aside little, uh, you know, divisional things, little things that want to get between us right now to stop us from uniting under the banner of Christ, that we would put aside, you know, other worldly agendas that we have going on for the weekend. I'm not telling you to cancel your 30 year anniversary with your wife or anything like that, but it is a call for us to wholeheartedly return to the Lord and for every man, for every man and woman in the, in the sight of the Lord to prayerfully consider before him if this is your opportunity, uh, if this is your for such a time as this uh, moment in history to come together with other believers all across the nation to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to return to our first love. That is the, that is the, uh, you know, the first priority, <laughs> that is the first priority that we, God's people, would return to our first love, to Jesus Christ. Not that we would necessarily, you know, rally around politics or even the disease. I mean, these are catalysts. These things are what God would use to bring us to a place of dependency upon him. But if we don't see that, and if we're just passively waiting for quote unquote things to go back to normal, it's actually a sign to us that we are in deep trouble. Because again, the only biblical response to such a time as this, when abortion is going crazy in our land, when so many other you know, sexual immorality from our pulpits, many of our young people are addicted to pornography, uh, you know, there's all types of division in the church right now, all types of chaos happening in the earth but judgment starts with the house of God and we his people have to understand that the only biblical response to such a day that we're living in is that God's people would come together in solemn assembly and call upon his name that we would repent that we would turn away from our wicked ways this is why I'm encouraging you guys to go and look at that solemn assembly document read it for yourself let the Lord stir you let the Lord call you back to himself with all of us who are joining ourselves for such a time as this. Pleading, pleading that God will have mercy on our land. What else is going to do it for us? What else is a solution? Who else has a solution for what we're going through right now? The prophets prophesied and people went out and voted and we fasted and we prayed and we did all of that stuff. And I'm still hoping and believing that, you know, God would, will intervene. But any student of scripture will know and won't need any convincing that God often times and has in a way concealed himself to wait for his people. He waits for his people to do what only they can do. And when his people do their responsibility, which is to cry out to him, then he intervenes. But brothers and sisters, I see in my own life first and in so many lives around, I see apathy I see indifference. I see a passive waiting uh, for things to go back to normal. Yes, I do see saints crying out to the Lord. I do see people in my own life and other people around me and across the nation. I do see people really shaking off the entanglements of this world, shaking off the love of this world and getting out to the Lord, uh, going out to him. Um, but, you know, not to the extent that I believe is warranted, not to the extent that Truly, I believe that God is looking for uh, as a response from a nation that is in, in uh, distress. So this is a call, uh, a rally cry to assemble yourselves uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, over the weekend, uh, this upcoming weekend, as we enter in the new year, um, January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, we're inviting you to fast for three days, uh, preferably just to drink water. Uh, and if for any reason you're not able to do that, that's fine. Take it before the Lord and, and, and get from him what would be an acceptable fast before him uh, for this time. But we truly want to humble ourselves before the Lord, not just to have our faces on TV, not just to, you know, get together about political agendas or any of that. I mean, that I get that. 
the political stuff and that's fine. I'm just saying that that is not the number one foundational issue in the house of the Lord. The number one foundational issue in the house of God is that his people would be living upright, holy lives, walking in the fear of the Lord with a revelation of Jesus Christ as witnesses of Jesus Christ. Constantly walking in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, constantly exalting the person and the name of Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men to myself. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants to do in our day and in our generation. He wants to draw me unto himself. And he wants to draw every single one of us from the lowest saint who is unknown by anybody to the greatest leader across our nation. God wants to draw all men unto himself and that is uh what we are crying out for that is what this is all about it is a rally cry for first the church to return to her first love to him who was and is to come and then to uh, stand in the gap for this nation which is in trouble um so just a few practical details of the event um I think actually I want to defer that to uh, the website. Just go and just just go and look at that. Um, I I'm really not all put together. I really didn't have an agenda for all of this. Just to share my heart about this uh, solemn assembly. So oh, one thing I do want to say is that you know there will be like a live stream. But uh, one second, who cares if you're a part of the live stream? It's really not about the live stream. What it's about is. Saints and leaders alike, wherever you are across the nation, you guys assembling yourselves unto the Lord and calling out to Him in your own unique way. Gathering in small communities, uh, in churches, in, in homes, uh, out in the mountains and in the hills, wherever you feel comfortable and wherever the door is open to gather. That is what's important. That is what this is about. It's not about an event called the Solemn Assembly. dot com. It's not about that. It's about believers hearing the trumpet blast, saying it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to plow up the fallow ground, the untended ground of our lives. It's time to seek the Lord until He rains down righteousness upon us, His people, and then on this land, this nation in which we live. We have a responsibility to stand in the gap. We have a responsibility to uh, intercede before the God who sits upon the throne in heaven for the inhabitants of this land. So, you know, my plea to you is if not now, then when? If not you, then who? Uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm nobody. I don't even want to be on the screen right now doing this except for the fact that literally nobody else is doing it. And I felt the Lord in it when, you know, I was going to write a letter to a few different leaders and I attempted to reach out on Facebook and I got no response and I was overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by the need for the people of God collectively, not just the Baptists. You know, lots of denominations are doing these fasts, um, not the first, second and third, but, you know, the third through the 24th and other days throughout the month. But it's all, you know broken down and fragmented but it's time for we who belong to jesus christ we who are the body of jesus christ to come together under the name of jesus under the authority of jesus not just the not just in word but truly submitting ourselves unto him bowing down to him and allowing him to raise us up in him under his authority our plea is that God would, would fill us during this time, that God would first cleanse us, then that he would fill us, then that he would govern us. Jesus, his government shall know no end, the expanse of his government. That is what we are after for a restoration in our land, uh, for true godliness, for a true fear of God in our land. So, brothers and sisters, please, you, you, you take up the the trumpet you take up the call to rally people unto king jesus be zealous for his name be zealous for his name don't wait for somebody else to do it don't wait for somebody else to rally the people you rally the people in your own community you open up your home you organize a meeting out in the hills you open up your church and call the saints of god to seek his face to return to him to leave behind their wickedness our wickedness to turn away from it to to Stand in the gap for the land in which we live. 
you, my friend, you, my brother and my sister in the Lord Jesus Christ, you stand in the gap. Don't wait for anybody else to do it. Don't wait for the fast that's in February or in mid-January. Here's an opportunity right now to bring in this new year, really calling upon the name of the Lord, really consecrating ourselves to the Lord, really humbling ourselves before the Lord. And it is time for us to humble ourselves before the Lord because we're absolutely nothing. None of us. If Let him who thinks he's something recognize that he is nothing. All right? And let us who think we know something recognize that we don't know anything at all. All we know is that Jesus Christ is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. And we must cling to him, and we must lift him up in this nation, and we must walk in him, in him who is true. So that's my simple plea. Uh, please, uh, you, respond to the call in your own way. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you... Go to the website. Doesn't matter if you're a part of the live stream. Doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Assemble yourselves under King Jesus in your own homes, in your own communities. Return to our first love. Stand in the gap. Plead with God to have mercy upon this land. To push back the tide of deception that is coming over this land that is here now and is coming. To push back the Antichrist spirit that is already here now but wants to have his throne right here in this nation. Brothers and sisters, please prayerfully go before the Lord. See how He would have you to respond to this solemn call to return unto Him who was and is and is to come. His name is Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And this is the call for just that. So God bless you guys. Uh, I'm just going to look over at my phone right here to see if there was any questions or anything like that. But uh, praise the Lord. Love you guys. That's right. My brother uh, Corey is. Uh, we need to stop having people, but ministries and church put ministries and uh, churches above Christ. That's right, brother. Amen. Jorge, what's up, brother? Arabia Daniel. Hey, guys. God bless you guys. Hey, Mindy. Love you. Rob, God bless you, bro. All right, you guys. Well, unless anybody has any questions about it, you know. Uh, Love you guys, and if you have any questions, obviously feel free to go to the website. Um, hallelujah. Jesus is king. All right? We might not be able to make America godly again, but we can make the church godly again. The Lord can make the church godly again. We can repent. All right? We can turn away. We can acknowledge our guilt before the Lord that we have. This is the number one issue, guys, that we have left our first love. All right? We can argue about, you know, uh, Bible interpretation and doctrine. We can argue about all of that and so many things we can argue about. But here's the here's the root of all of the abominations that are in the land of America. That the church has left her first love. That we are not in an all-consuming, heart-burning relationship with Jesus Christ. With Jesus, Lord. So please, guys, now is the time. Hallelujah.